Hello, third graders. Today is Tuesday, and it's the second day of your free write practice where you get to be the creator of your own story. Today's going to look a little different, though. Yesterday, you were just creating the ending of the story that I had started, Gary the Gutter Cat. But today, you're actually going to get a chance to look at two different pictures and brainstorm ideas to write a complete story. So you need to use characters, setting, problem, and solution in order to finish the story. And you're going to need to include details. So just like yesterday, details are these things. How is the character feeling, acting? What are they saying? What are their thoughts? How would you describe them? Remember when I described this friend, Lucy the Unicorn? And how can you make your words more interesting? That's what variety of text means. So one way to think of a story is by using a story map. And I actually borrowed this from Annie and Moby because when they were trying to write a story, that's what Annie did. She first started with the who, the who, or who's the main character? Okay, so when you look at the picture, who are the characters that are going to be in that story? Now, let me show you what I mean. In your Google Forms today, you're going to see two pictures. Okay, the top is a picture of a boy walking a dog. Maybe it's his dog. Maybe it's his grandma's dog. Maybe it's his neighbor's dog. That's for you to decide. And they're going through a puddle. So you need to think about who are the main characters in that picture. You get to choose their name. Or you could choose picture number two, which looks like a girl who's at a water park. There are some more kids in the background. Maybe they're her friends. Maybe they're there for her birthday. So you don't have to write two different stories, but you get to choose. Do you want to use picture one to write a story or picture two to write a story? And once you've chosen your picture, then you start to use this story map, okay? A story map is meant to help you map out what is happening in your story. So like I said, who would include main characters or other characters, like those secondary characters we've talked about? Setting, we all know what setting is. We've talked about this all year long. Where or the place, maybe it's a farm, maybe it's a school. And when, what time? Is it in the past, the present, or the future? Then you need to think about what happens in the beginning of the story, in the middle of the story, and the end of the story. Now, something I know is that you might not have a lot of stuff to work with at home for school supplies, but story mapping can be as easy as a piece of paper and a pencil. All that you would need to do is divide your paper into four boxes, kind of like you see here. In one box, write characters. In another box, write setting. Third box, write problem. And the fourth box, you can write solution. The reason I suggest doing a story map is that's gonna help you when it comes to typing out your story on the computer. Um, another resource you can check out there is actually a brain pop video here with Annie and Moby called Writing a Short Story. This is a really helpful resource. You could watch this video as soon as you're done watching my video because it gives you a lot more information about what to do when you're trying to write a short story. Okay, so what did they, what do Annie and Moby do to write a short story? They brainstorm using pictures and real life. Okay, so they start thinking of ideas in their brain. Then they start and write a story map. I'm gonna change this word. I'm gonna say to write a story map. Then their next step is to take that story map and write the story, including details. So that's your job today. You need to remember to choose one of these two pictures create an idea in your brain, then do a story map, 
and then write your story, including details. All right, have fun. <laughs>